task six, assess the classification, compute confusion matrix. A confusion matrix describes the performance of a classification algorithm by comparing known data values with data values from a classifier. A confusion matrix is presented in a table format with rows representing actual values and columns corresponding to those rows with predicted values. In the case of this exercise, we just want to compare the ground truth assessment points that were created in task five with the classification that was generated in task four. The confusion matrix will give us a variety of quantitative values to determine the overall utility of the SVM algorithm and inform possible modifications that need to be made to improve the accuracy. ArcGIS Pro provides a tool to compute a confusion matrix. Follow these steps to compute a confusion matrix. Under the Analysis tab, select Tools, Geoprocessing, and enter into the search box, Compute Confusion Matrix. And it should just fill in even with a partial search of the term. And this is a really simple tool to use. So enter the following into the Compute Confusion Matrix tool. The input accuracy assessment points are going to be your Dorian assessment points. And as a reminder, these particular points were provided with the data sets that you can download for this lab. And for the output confusion matrix, I'm going to store it as a standalone table in my default project database, as this will make it easier for me to view right inside of ArcGIS Pro and won't require any extra tools like Microsoft Excel. So I go into my project folder, and I'll call it Dorian Dorian Confusion Matrix. I click the Run button. And you can see that it adds the Confusion Matrix as a standalone table to my map. And I'll right click to open it. Now it's important to understand how to interpret the results of the confusion matrix. Each of the classification classes are shown by their class values. C11 for damaged trees, C21 for blue tarp cover, C22 for intact roof, C23 for destroyed building, and C31 for open roads. Each class is compared between what the human or values in the rows and what the machine or the values in the column classified. When there is complete agreement between the machine and human, all the values except where the two agree will be zero and the U accuracy or user or human accuracy and P accuracy or producer or machine accuracy will be one, indicating complete agreement. In this confusion matrix table, value C21 blue tarp cover received U accuracy and P accuracy values of one, indicating that there was complete agreement between the machine and the human. When the human misclassifies a pixel, this is what is known as a false positive or type one error of commission, where a known class is incorrectly classified and should have been classified to another class. In the table, this can most clearly be seen with row C23, destroyed buildings. For example, 
Look at the row starting with C23 and note how the human classified several pixels as C23, but the machine classified those same pixels differently as C11, damaged trees, C22, intact roof with two values, and C31, open roads with five values, thus decreasing the U accuracy down to about 50%. This was likely due to the fact that destroyed buildings look similar in some cases to damaged trees or open roads in terms of gray color values. The total row represents the number of points that should have been identified by the human per class. Conversely, when the machine fails to detect a pixel correctly, this is what is known as a false negative or type 2 error of omission. In this table, this can most clearly be seen with column C31, open roads, where the machine misclassified open roads C31 as C11, which in fact are damaged trees with one value, and C23, destroyed buildings with five values. Because of this, the P accuracy was down to about 57%. This was likely due to the fact that open roads, in some cases, look very similar to destroyed buildings in terms of gray color values. Additionally, the overall sample size of the open roads class is relatively small, with only 10 samples. The total column represents the number of points that were identified by the machine or producer class. The kappa value is the overall level of agreement between the human and the machine. The kappa value of about 77%, according to the literature, is considered substantial agreement, with greater than 0.81 being almost perfect agreement. Thus, the overall results indicate that the SVM algorithm performed moderately well in classifying the Dorian image. So with that, this concludes the hands-on demonstration of the GIS laboratory available in this video series. I encourage you to go back and create different training samples and try different machine learning algorithms and assess their outputs to see which algorithm performs best with your data sets. In this video series, I taught you about four things. First, I gave you a general introduction to the idea of machine learning, agnostic of any connection machine learning has to GIS, as machine learning is a much broader topic. If this video series was in fact your first introduction to machine learning in general, if you are interested in topics such as data science, big data, analytics, and other related areas, I encourage you to explore these fields further. Next, I showed you some of the things that you can do with machine learning using GIS tools. Specifically, prediction, or using known values to estimate unknown values, like for example, is done with regression analysis. Classification, or the idea where a category of an object is determined based on a training set. Classification is what I showed you in the hands-on GIS laboratory exercise, where we use support vector machine classification machine learning algorithm in the context of classifying features from disaster imagery. And I also talked about clustering, where data observations are grouped based on similar values or locations, like in hotspot analysis. I then gave you a brief tour of machine learning in ArcGIS Pro to show you some of the machine learning tools that exist in the ArcGIS Pro software environment. ArcGIS Pro comes with many out-of-the-box machine learning tools that do not require any specialized skills, such as computer programming with the Python language. Finally, I showed you a complete machine learning workflow in terms of the big picture and a detailed hands-on demonstration of a GIS machine learning workflow 
as per the GIS laboratory exercise that you can download from the video description below. I hope that this GIS Masterclass video series has now given you some confidence with using machine learning in ArcGIS Pro. If you enjoyed this video series, please consider subscribing to this channel, like these videos, or leave me a comment on anything in the video you think I missed or you think are tips that other viewers might like to know. Also, be sure to hit the notification button so you can stay up to date on new GIS Masterclass and other videos on this channel. Thanks for watching. The following are references used for this lecture. Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.